part 2 of neural network basics. Ok, we will now discuss how a neural network is trained. A quick recap. This is the input layer. The input layer has just input numbers or independent variables. This is the output layer. These are hidden layers. The hidden layers and the output layer have neurons. Each neuron has an associated weight it uses to multiply an input value. So, if a neuron receives an input vector of length 5, there will be 5 weights maintained by that neuron. Each neuron also has a bias. During the training phase, the weights and biases are optimized. In the very beginning, the weights are random. Let us say that we have these 3 values for water, salinity, and fertilizer. These three numbers go through the layers. Calculated values come out of each neuron of the first layer. Then the calculated values become input for the neurons in the second layer, so and so forth. Finally, we have a calculated output from the output layer. Now, this calculated output is not close to what the data is saying. Remember, in the beginning, all the Ws and biases are random, so the output will not be correct. The difference between the actual piquant production that the data has for this associated input and the calculated piquant production for the given input is called an error. For each set of input vector of water, salinity, and fertilizer, the error is calculated between computed piquant production and actual piquant production. All the errors are then summed up. Now, notice that in the beginning we had random W and bias values for the neurons. That has resulted in some errors. So, we should do some correction of those weights and biases. When we send the data from left to right and did the calculations up to the output layer, those calculations are called forward propagation. After forward propagation of the entire data table, we have the summation of errors. Since there is an error, we need to adjust the weights. This adjustment process is carried out through a method known as backpropagation. What does backpropagation do? During backpropagation, the neural network calculates how much of the error is attributed to each weight and each bias of every neuron. With this estimation, we can adjust the weights and biases accordingly. Backpropagation uses calculus, specifically partial derivatives, to calculate the necessary adjustments. The backpropagation process occurs from right to the left through the neural network. I won't discuss the detailed mathematics of backpropagation here. There are excellent YouTube videos that explain it thoroughly, so I encourage you to watch those for a deeper understanding. For now, just keep in mind that backpropagation adjusts the weights and biases. As a result, when we perform another forward propagation with the adjusted weights and biases, the error should decrease. The error correction is done through multiple iterations. Each iteration consists of a complete forward pass followed by a complete backward pass to adjust weights. The forward pass calculates the error and the corresponding backpropagation adjusts the weights accordingly. In one iteration, the forward and backward propagations are performed over the entire dataset intended for training. In the next iteration, the same process is repeated with the updated weights and biases. We continue iterating as long as the error keeps decreasing or until we reach a maximum number of iterations. An iteration over the entire dataset is called an epoch. In neural network terminology, an epoch refers to the completion of a full forward pass on the training data, followed by a complete back propagation to adjust the weights and biases. Some datasets may require only a few epochs, where others may need tens to hundreds of epochs for a significant error reduction. You will often come across another term called learning rate when coding neural networks. So, what exactly is the learning rate? 
The learning rate is a hyperparameter that controls how much to change the model in response to the estimated error each time the model weights are updated. Remember, we mentioned that the adjustment amount is calculated using partial derivatives. Instead of directly using the partial derivative values, we multiply them by a small number called learning rate. This helps us control the magnitude of the correction. The learning rate essentially determines the step size at each iteration as the model moves toward minimizing the error. A common starting point for the learning rate is 0.01, though this can vary depending on the specific problem and model architecture. If the learning rate is too high, the model may converge too quickly to a suboptimal solution or even diverge. On the other hand, if the learning rate is too low, the training process can become excessively slow, potentially getting stuck in a local minima. Finding the right learning rate is crucial for training an effective model. In addition to the learning rate, you will also encounter the concept of batching. Batching refers to the practice of splitting the dataset into smaller groups called batches during training. Instead of updating the model weights after every single data point or waiting until the entire dataset has been processed, we update the weights and biases after processing each batch. This approach can significantly speed up the training and can also help in smoothing out the noise in the gradient or derivative estimates. The size of these batches known as the batch size, is another important hyperparameter. Hyperparameter is a value or a parameter that is controlled by the programmer or the coder of the neural network. Smaller batch sizes lead to more frequent updates, which can result in more accurate adjustments, while larger batch sizes provide more stable estimates but require more memory. Finding the right balance in batch size along with tuning the learning rate is key to effectively training a neural network. After all the epochs, you have optimized weights and biases. Your neural network is then ready to use. For any new water, salinity, and fertilizer amount, your neural network model can predict the pecan production. Notice that once you have the model, that is, once you have all the weights and biases optimized, you do not need the original training data anymore. A model does not refer to the data. A model refers to the weights and biases of the neural network. Once you have the model, that is after the training, you only do forward pass for inference. Forward pass does not change the model. It only calculates the output value given the input. And this is how a basic neural network works. There are more complex items in the playlist where this video is placed. I'll provide a link to the playlist in the description section below. Let's code this neural network using Python now.